Do we have too much government? We need to put uh, people in ahead of corporate profits. This system is so lopsided. This threat is a real threat to democracy. And I think that's really important. That's something we haven't been doing in this country for a long time. Where do you start? What do you do? How do you do it? Access to Democracy and other Egan Community Television programming is supported by Thomson Reuters, makers of Westlaw Next and based in Egan. Through Westlaw Next and other innovative online services, Thomson Reuters is the world's leading source of intelligent information for businesses and professionals. Online at ThomsonReuters.com and by U.S. Federal Credit Union the member-owned financial institution offering service, value, and experience you can trust to the greater Twin Cities community. It's been seven years since Lori Swanson first graced our cameras in a different studio in a different time mm -hmm. and how far you have come. Uh, Minnesota's first female attorney general, uh, magna cum laude graduate of William Mitchell Law School and you were picked by uh, as I think it's Lawyers USA as one of the top attorneys, ten attorneys in the country. Uh, Champion of the Year by the National Consumer Law Center. What else? Well, it's been a real honor. It's great to be back on your show and has been a real honor to serve the people of Minnesota as Attorney General. You know, we are going through such a, a tough economy still, and when you go through these bruising financial times, uh, the little guy, the ordinary consumer, can get hurt, and it's been a real uh, privilege and honor to get to go to bat for people these last seven years. Well, you haven't just served the people of Minnesota. You have aggressively gone out to protect the people of Minnesota. You've had more high-profile actions out of your office in the last couple of years than I think any attorney general had in a decade at least. And let's talk about some of them. Sure. Accredited, accredited law. Yeah. What were they doing? What did you catch them at? And what happened? Well, what they were is a Chicago debt collector, and they had uh, put themselves into some hospitals in Minnesota and if you think of a hospital emergency room it's a solemn place it's a place where parents lose their children children lose their parents spouses lose each other it's a place of high medical trauma and emotional suffering and anxiety it's a uh, place that you want to really be like a sanctuary to care for the sick and wounded at what often could be the worst time in your life what we found is this accretive health had uh, gotten contracts with some Minnesota hospitals and was very aggressive in hospital emergency rooms in Minnesota trying to collect uh, money from people managing these hospitals revenue cycles and uh, basically if you think of our Minnesota hospitals they're charitable institutions uh, they are supposed to do good in exchange for the millions of dollars in tax breaks they get a charitable hospital doesn't pay income tax sales tax property tax they get to sell tax-exempt bonds. Part of that mission then is go out and, and do good and, and treat people well. And this accretive uh, took over and managed the revenue cycle of several hospitals. And some of the stories that we heard uh, from patients here in Minnesota were horrific. Uh, what was in the papers was really, I mean, yeah. people being wheeled into uh, an operation or something mm -hmm. and having a debt collector there. Uh, I can only picture that they were wearing white uniforms uh, posing as hospital personnel and dunning people for money. Yeah, what would happen is people would check into a hospital for any number of reasons and uh, you know they might be having a stroke or symptoms of a heart attack or taking a sick child to the hospital and then oftentimes what was happening is people were asked to cough up a credit card uh, sometimes in the emergency room before they had seen a doctor, uh, before they had been examined, uh, before they had been treated at a time when they didn't even know if they were going to live or die. Um, just a couple examples, we had a woman who uh, was uh, in the Twin Cities visiting family. She was pregnant with her first baby, started to have signs of a miscarriage, went to the hospital emergency room and was stopped and asked to put a charge on a credit card uh, before she had been treated in the middle of a miscarriage 
and she ended up losing her baby that night, her first baby. Uh, in another case, a mother uh, brought a, a child uh, to the hospital emergency room uh, who didn't want to live anymore. And the mother was ripped away uh, from the daughter in the wee hours and asked to put uh, $500 on a credit card uh, before she could return to her daughter's bedside. Another case, a mother uh, had just had her first child and was told, you can't check out of the hospital until you pay $800 in a credit card. We won't discharge your baby. And uh, she did want to get that baby home. And it turns out she didn't even owe the money and then had to fight for months afterward to get a refund of the $800 that she never should have been asked to pay. So what happened to Accretive as a result of this aggressive action that you brought? We filed a lawsuit <coughs> against them and then ultimately uh, it culminated in a um, exit a settlement in which the company is no longer uh, going to be doing business in the state of Minnesota, exited the state, and then had to pay about $2.5 million into a, a settlement fund. But so it's, some um, of these people will get some reimbursement, but yeah. you don't get your emotional damage back. No, that's the kind of thing. I mean, just the pain and the fear and the anxiety. Uh, people worried about uh, their kids, their spouses. Uh, one, you know, I personally met with over 60 patients in this case where they sat down in our conference room and I met them, interviewed them, spoke with them. And, you know, a woman told me about, uh, asked to pay money on her credit card for an old bill from a prior visit. Uh, when her husband checked in with symptoms of heart pain and they said we have to have you pay this now and she didn't have a wallet on her body she had just left the house in an emergency and ran to her car uh, hoping just hoping she would have a debit card in her glove compartment and then thinking where's the next closest emergency room i could bring him to if i don't uh, that's the kind of thing uh, no american hospital should operate that way uh, at such a tragic time in your life when you're under medical duress sick uh, disoriented uh, Patients were hooked up to morphine drips, uh, vomiting sometimes, confused on uh, pain medication, and nobody should be put through that. And unfortunately, um, you know, sometimes we see uh, those types of shoddy practices where uh, well, companies are bent on. That's one company that won't be doing it in Minnesota. They are not going to be. And that's going to be uh, a good thing for Minnesota yeah. patients. <clears throat> now, I'm on the national do not call list, yeah. which is a name. Yeah that's worthless, frankly, to yeah, me. Right. If I get one more call from Rachel at Cardholder right. card Services mm -hmm. telling me I can lower my interest rates, mm -hmm. uh, I call back these numbers, yeah. and they're not even legitimate numbers. Correct. So that you call and you say, this is not a working number. Mm -hmm. Is there no relief from that type of harassment? You know, a couple of things are going on. First of all, Rachel's <laughs> a very busy woman. Uh, she seems to be making millions of calls around the country. She has uh, a sister, Samantha. Yes, uh, she, there uh, she's busy too. Yes. And uh, you know, one of the problems in this day and age is there's a new technology, uh, caller ID spoofing. And it used to be caller ID meant something. Uh, caller ID, would you'd pay for it, it would work, the number would come up and you could take it to the bank. Nowadays, uh, these scam artists use new technology to spoof. Uh, phone numbers and so the number that shows up on the caller ID may not be even a real number you call it back and it turns out it's it's not even there and so we're seeing more and more of these scam artists operate uh, the way uh, drug dealers used to frankly you know throw away cell phones they're on the run here today gone tomorrow and that makes it really difficult for you took call that laws. on though in some respect did we you have not? Yeah, I filed a petition here in Minnesota <clears throat> with our PUC our Public Utility Commission asking them to basically regulate the phone companies. I mean, they're selling a uh, caller ID to people as if it works. And if it's not going to work anymore because it can be so easily spoofed, then, you know, very frankly, uh, it, it ought to be disclosed to the consumer. Perhaps the rates should be lowered. And I think that, you know, phone companies should have a responsibility to help solve this problem. Is technology that has created it and technology, I think, could start addressing it as well. And if you don't want to get calls mm -hmm. like that, you shouldn't have to get calls like that. Harassing calls coming in at dinner time mm -hmm. uh, or even less opportune times. Exactly. You know, your home <laughs> should be a, a private place and it should be up to you to control uh, who rings it. And just more and more through these scam artists, we're seeing uh, the do not call list not work. I mean, and part of the problem is outright criminals um, are going to flaunt all laws. Uh, if you're a criminal and you're going to try to steal somebody, try to steal somebody's money, then you're probably not going to follow a do not call law either. Um, and this economy that's been so tough for people has created, I think, some uh, very aggressive behavior on Which the part of scammers. Which brings up another thing. Seniors mm. seem to be victimized uh, disproportionately. Yeah. 
and I know you've had some involvement with some of these scams on mm -hmm. seniors. So. We have, um, you know, senior citizens are targeted. Uh, partly it's demographics. We have uh, baby boomers, something like 10,000 a day are retiring in this country, and so we have an aging population. Senior citizens also have typically saved up some nest egg for retirement, and so they're targeted. People want that money. You know, the old bank robber Jesse James was once asked by an enterprising newspaper reporter, why do you rob banks? And he said, I rob them because that's where the money is. Well, with senior citizens in the same fashion, people try to target the money, and uh, it's despicable. Uh, senior citizens, when they're ripped off, they can't go back to work. Uh, when the money's gone, it's gone. And, um, and we've seen a host of actions targeting seniors uh, from these security alarm companies that go door to door and you know scare senior citizens who may be living alone that they better have a security alarm system and then they'll aggressively install a program that doesn't work uh, to uh, telemarketers that rip off uh, grandparents by saying uh, you know hi I'm I'm your grandson and I'm in a foreign country I'm stuck I need you to wire money and then you do and the money's gone for good I think those uh, scams and fraud on senior citizens is um, especially despicable. And sometimes they say I'm in jail or your grandson is in jail mm -hmm. and I'm calling from the jail, please. <clears throat> of course, my response would be, well, if you're in jail, it's probably a reason. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> exactly. Okay. And so they target people's generosity, obviously wanting to help family members. And, and then you wire the money uh, and then off they go with it again, picking it up at a, you know, Western Union in Canada and, uh, and they run off with the money and they're are then hard to apprehend. It's, it's really, uh, it's frightening. And of course, mm -hmm. when the economy, as you said, is bad, yeah. the proliferation of yeah. scams uh, increases. It really does. Um, you know, people are, um, you know, maybe having a hard time getting by. And so when these scams come in or these phone calls come in, scam artists prey upon people's financial desperation. A lot of people are having a hard time making a go of it. And when they make these offers that sound good, then people can be more susceptible in bad economic times. We've seen, you know, as people have had higher levels of credit card debt, you know, having to charge things like groceries to get by in an economy if they're unemployed. We've seen companies come in saying, I can help you lower the interest rate on your credit cards. And, you know, you pay them a couple thousand dollars and they don't do anything for you. They charge a hefty advance fee. They take your money. Now you even have $2,000 less and they, they do nothing to solve the problem. I had an occasion at the beginning of the year to use a company to get some information. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and it was 1995. So mm -hmm. they charged my credit card in 1995. Mm -hmm. Well, last month I happened to look and I noticed that I've been charged 1995 a month for eight months. Yeah. And I called the company up and mm -hmm. I said, wait a second, mm -hmm. I didn't join anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a member of you. What is this? Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, when you take the, ninth, the first charge, uh, there's something on the page that says, if you don't notify us otherwise, mm -hmm. And so I said, no, there's not. Mm -hmm. uh, they said, well, we'll refund your 1995 for this month. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, you'll refund my 1995 for eight months. Uh, Good for you, you have to speak to a manager. Mm -hmm. I spoke to a manager. Uh, we had a few words. In fact, uh, I think I said two words, and they weren't Merry Christmas. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, uh, I got eight mm -hmm. months charge back this, mm -hmm. this month. But people, I mean, you know, I, I generally look at my bills, but something like 1995, it slips through. Yeah. And that's a complete, complete scam. Yeah, and we've seen more and more of that where uh, mm -hmm. both phone companies and credit card companies will post onto people's bills charges like that, 999, 1995, designed to fly under the radar so people won't detect them. Oftentimes the charge is billed as something really innocuous like phone services or credit products and you think it's maybe part of your account. And it's called cramming, uh, where companies place bogus unauthorized charges on people's phone bills and credit card bills. We filed a lawsuit not too long ago Cheap against- Cheap to dial, wasn't that one of the companies you went after? It was, it was a telephone crammer and people don't understand that their phone bill nowadays can be used like a credit card to charge for products that you may not authorize, that you may not want, kind of junk products if you will. And what happens is phone companies enter into contracts with something called billing aggregators 
which uh, then enter into contracts with these crammers and uh, the crammers will give the billing aggregator a phony charge it'll give it to the phone company that appears on your phone bill and if you don't detect it it can go on for months and years and can really be big money the Federal Trade Commission shut down a guy operating out of a Florida jail cell who was a telephone crammer in jail in Florida and he made something like 30 million dollars in cram charges uh, before he was apprehended and caught. I'm in the wrong and, business. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so it's um, it's big money, uh, and uh, you know they count on the fact that a lot of people simply don't notice it. And if you do call up, it can be hard to get the charges off. You per persevered and uh, uh, and and got it off, but a lot of people will call and be given the runaround, and and they don't know how to deal with the situation. Um, we sued a Discover Card, one of the big uh, credit card companies, for doing something similar. A little while ago, they had uh, called people up at dinner time, said, "Hey, we, we're offering this credit protection, wallet protection, identity theft protection. Uh, your credit card company already has your credit card number, and here they're marketing products that are designed to protect people from fraud. And as it turns out, they were using very deceptive." techniques to basically put unauthorized charges on people's accounts. And what do you um, do in a situation like that, And so, you as the Attorney General? So I filed a lawsuit against uh, Discover Bank, the big uh, bank, and uh, we ended up getting a settlement where they have to change their practices going forward, uh, make refunds to people. But it's the kind of thing where a lot of people don't detect those charges on their bill. and. Uh, one of the reasons we uh, like to hear from members of the public and when these things have happened is it's how we can then band together people and bring cases and try to stop the practices and, and shut them down. I mean, they have no place in a fair marketplace. So one of the things that's coming out of this is really consumer beware. Mm -hmm. When you get a bill, scrutinize that bill carefully mm -hmm. to make sure that what's on there is something that you recognize mm -hmm. and that you purchased. Absolutely, and that is a phone bill, a credit card bill, really any type of financial statement. Uh, lately, people have been seeing on their cell phone bills charges for the 999 for uh, text messages that they never ordered. And what happens is uh, texters, <coughs> fraudsters, will send to your cell phone a text message saying, if you don't opt out and reject this, we're going to charge your account 999. And you get charged for that. And you get charged for it. And um, they kind of get you either way. And if you do accept it, they you know defraud you there too. Uh, and so one way or another, they're um, coming up with ever new inventive ways to rip off consumers. But the only thing that you do is not going after fraud and fraudulent people. Mm -hmm. You also have been proactive in suggesting legislation, trying to implement legislation, mm -hmm. and I know the anti-bullying legislation yeah. started with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, one of the things that uh, the Attorney General uh, does is try to look at ways we can improve the law, so not just enforce the law after the fact, but let's fix things that are broken. And one of the tragedies uh, for Minnesota is that we've got one of the weakest bullying laws in the entire country. There's a website, Bully Police USA, and they grade all of our state laws. And Minnesota got a C minus, which is the lowest of any state that actually has a bullying law. And, you know, what I looked at is what are other states doing around the country? And we found a law in North Dakota that gets an A plus plus rating. And what it does is allows kids to report incidents of bullying. If they do report it, then, you know, the schools have to do something about it. Uh, there's sunshine brought to bear where the school then files a report with the state every year so we can kind of see how are they addressing it um, so that you know sunshine can be a disinfectant and these things can be handled in the open that kids feel safe um, you know when you talk to police uh, who I've worked with in Minnesota I mean they talk about the huge cost of bullying for that child um, the absentee rate of a kid who's bullied uh, is enormous, something like 160,000 kids every day. To say nothing of the psychological impact. That's right, the psychological impact, the harm, some of the tragedies that have come about in terms of uh, kids who have taken their lives after they were ferociously yeah. bullied. And then, um, you know, not addressing it even for the, the student who is the bully. Uh, police say if you don't nip that in the bud, then, you know, those kids as well uh, tend to uh, go into lives of you know crime sometimes they become you know juvenile delinquents and so 
uh, we are uh, being foolhardy as a state not to address this. We can do better in Minnesota. <clears throat> so where has your proposal gone? Well, unfortunately, it was introduced. We had bipartisan bill. Uh, Representative Deborah Hillstrom uh, was a, an author, along with Representative Abler, and uh, in the House, and then we had Senate authors as well. And it didn't has not passed yet. Uh, but I hope that the next legislature can seriously address this problem. You know, we're a state, Minnesota, that has led on education for. Uh, believing in education and when you have bullying undermining until our recently, education system anyway. until re until re more recently yeah. and more recently but you know i want to see minnesota getting that a plus for addressing bullying not getting a c minus for not addressing it now i'm looking down at uh, some of the things debt assistance scams uh, scams targeting grandparents we talked about check your credit card statements the bullying what about the environment? You've been involved in the environment. Well, now mm -hmm. People would say, what has the Attorney General got to do mm -hmm. with the environment? Yeah. But you were out there mm -hmm. uh, because of the uh, Asian carp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, um, Asian carp are, are something that really threatens Minnesota. Um, you know, they were, it's kind of a little bit of the old don't mess with mother nature. Uh, Asian carp were brought from Asia back uh, in the southern uh, catfish farms to control algae in the catfish farms and then the, when there were some floods down south in Alabama they came up uh, got out escaped came up the Mississippi and River they're every place and they're every place and they consume uh, huge amounts of food they can be 100 pounds four feet high uh, eat half their body weight every day in food and we're I escaped. used to do that that's right I know yeah we, we, we all have to watch that uh, and uh, you know they can they're just vociferous eaters and they multiply and so uh, we're a state that you know, both for our way of life and our economy counts on fishing all right the land of 10,000 lakes and and so we filed a lawsuit um, against the federal government in Illinois to basically say let's try to take steps here not to allow Asian carp into the Great Lakes because if they get into the Great Lakes then you know they can obviously invade inland waterways and, and be incredibly destructive so well, far, that say, has not succeeded. You say we, but really, you're the one who has to say yay or nay for these things. Yeah. And obviously, the reason that you were picked as one of the top 10 attorneys general in the country is because you have been aggressive about this. I know there are some other aggressive attorneys general, New York, mm -hmm. uh, among others. And uh, rather than sit on your hands, rather than have a title, you have really gone out there and gone after it. We've done our best, you know, to st stand up for people, uh, represent uh, civil justice in, in the courts, and and uh, do things that make a difference in the lives of Minnesota citizens. Uh, the reality today is if you're just an average person, you're not going to be able to afford your own lawyer or lobbyist to go to bat for you. And so uh, the goal and the hope is that at least some of the time and some of the cases when we hear about problems, we can take them into the courtroom and, and help people. One of the worst things that I've heard is adoption agencies who prey on people who are adopting children yeah. by charging them thousands and sometimes tens of thousands of dollars of excessive fees. Mm -hmm. And I know you were involved in that also. Yeah, we took action against an adoption agency. It had uh, promised prospective parents who wanted to adopt children that they would find children. And we had parents who paid money uh, to the agency based on promises that they would have a child place with them and then didn't deliver. And that is uh, one of the most despicable things you can do to a, a parent who wants to adopt a child. Um, so often one of the common things we see is companies and uh, scammers who will just take advantage of people's hopes and dreams, uh, kind of finding that place where they can manipulate and, and prey upon people's uh, either misfortunes or prey upon people's hopes, as was the case with the adoption agency. And, 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 we and do it without conscience, Absolutely. without any thought of the feelings or the impact or the emotions that are involved on the victims. Absolutely. And they are victims. Absolutely. Almost everything we've talked about here is a victim. Absolutely. Now, interesting, in a time when budgets are shrinking, in a time when everybody is working with less, particularly here in Minnesota, mm -hmm. you have done so also. You've cut the size of your office. I think when you came into office, you had 260 attorneys, mm -hmm. and you now have 130. Mm -hmm. How have you managed this? Well, we work hard, and uh, I like to think that uh, you know budget cuts have faced all entities. It's certainly faced government, uh, corporations, businesses, individual families, and so what we do is uh, work really hard uh, to 
go to bat for people and hopefully deliver um, a good bang for the buck. And I think we have. And this doesn't sound like a nine to five. And that's not a nine to five. We work really, really hard. Uh, the team uh, that I've put together, we work hard because uh, people have a right to expect uh, that their attorney general's office and that their government work hard for them. And how many investigators do you have? You know, of the size of the staff, I mean, we have the um, probably about 130 attorneys, and then uh, the rest of the staff is comprised of everything you need to run a, a large public law office, if you will. So investigators, secretaries, paralegals. paralegals, support staff, things of that nature. Now, another thing that we were involved with, speaking of these vultures, is payday lenders. Mm -hmm. Explain what that is and what they do or what they did before you got a hold of them. Yeah, so again, a uh, sign of the times in a bad economy, a lot of people have trouble making it and tiding it over from paycheck to paycheck. And so if you go on the internet and you type in short-term loan, payday loan, uh, something like that, up will come many, many different companies that market and sell so-called payday loans, which are supposedly loans for a short duration, 14 days, let's say designed to get you from one paycheck to the next paycheck. Uh, only in Minnesota we regulate lending and uh, lenders have to follow certain usury or interest rate laws. Well, these internet companies are not following our laws. They are issuing payday loans with outrageous rates of interest. I mean, 790% interest on a loan. Well, you can imagine you take out a $300 loan to fix your car to get over to the next payday at 700% interest when it's revolving over and over and rolling <laughs> over, pretty soon the interest alone starts swamping that loan. And so it's another form of predatory lending uh, when these are sold to tremendously desperate people. Uh, they're not following our law, so it creates an on-level playing field for our Minnesota state banks that are following the laws and the interest rate laws. So we've been filing lawsuits against these And you can online. go after them because they are doing business in this state. They are doing business in this state. They are selling loans to uh, Minnesota consumers, depositing the money into Minnesota consumers' bank accounts. And so that subjects them to our state laws. And we've been filing lawsuits against them and shutting them down, trying to get people their money back when they've paid unlawful rates of interest. And then again, trying to create a, a fair level playing field for lenders who are here and, and following all the laws. On the seventh day, she didn't rest. <laughs> We've been talking with Lori Swanson, our Attorney General, and I think that consumers in particular and the people of Minnesota uh, can sleep easier at night knowing that your office is out there being aggressive, being proactive, taking the stance that you have. We just, I've just touched some of the uh, more notable cases that you've been involved in in the last year or so. This has been an ongoing thing with you. Where does Lori Swanson go from here? Well, we're going to keep working hard. Uh, you know, we get these complaints and uh, we take them, and um, it's just a real honor to be able to serve people and, uh, you know, continue to work hard and, and do the best we can to make a difference for people here in Minnesota. Well, I thank you very much, and uh, just keep it up. Thank you, Alan. Because you are protecting us, and as you know, I have two scams to hand you at I the end of this that. interview that just fresh arrived within the last couple of days. Absolutely. We will, we will follow up on those. I know you will. Appreciate it very much. Thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate it.